Folks, you better buckle up. We've got a lot to get into today. We'll start with the market setup. Heading into tomorrow, this week will be a jam-packed earnings week, and you need to prepare. And then for the main entree, we need to talk about a stock trading at about $2.51 that is due for a short squeeze and catalyst run. I'll break it down. And as always, if you're the one taking the risk, you got to be the one doing the ultimate frisk. Make sure to do your own due diligence on all ideas presented here on this channel. Let's get to work. Timestamps down below. Okay, so markets right now are trying to bounce back from their biggest sell-off since October. Big tech, with the exception of Meta and Tesla, are back and rallying. Absolutely stunning quarterly results from Microsoft and Alphabet have got people very excited. You also have this huge IPO of Rubrik, which is an AI cloud data management and security company. The interest in its IPO signaled that there's still a ton of capital willing to froth up AI names. And now this coming week, we've got some big names reporting as well. SoFly, SoFi, PayPal, 3M, Amazon, AMD, MasterCard, Qualcomm, Apple, Coinbase, DraftKings, the king of drafts. Now, the far-reaching, market-shaking ones are going to be your Amazon and Apple. And in terms of chips, I mean, AMD also is very likely to be far reaching as well. Now, if you look at Amazon, it's had about four upward EPS revisions in the last seven days and nine in the last 30 days. If you look at Apple, you've seen two upward revisions in the last seven days and a total of three in the last 30 days. So expectations are getting higher and higher for companies that matter the most this week. You go over to AMD, as we've spoken about, AMD has been pivoting hard to dominating GPUs and is trying to take some market share from NVIDIA. It's trying to chip away some of NVIDIA's market share, no pun intended. So we'll see a report on the progress on that and its data center revenue is also expected to drive record profits. Okay, next, what about SoFi? SoFi, the five of the so is reporting tomorrow morning and SoFi has been on a pretty long train of reporting impressive growth with their last quarterly revenue reaching 615.40 million far exceeding the analyst expectations at what was then 572 million bucks. This achievement represented a substantial 34.7% increase in revenue year over year and looking to the future, analysts are pretty damn optimistic and I believe that you should be too about SoFi's prospects, projecting a pretty significant rise in the company's earnings. I mean, if you just look at their overall member number growth, it's pretty obvious that those members are going to be spending more and more money, or at least using more and more of SoFi's products and driving more and more revenue. You look at some of the consumer stocks reporting this week, you have McDonald's, Mickey D's, which keeps getting hit with higher and higher labor costs. This is going to be an interesting report. For example, in California, they just enacted a $20 minimum wage, which interestingly enough is specifically targeted towards big fast food companies like McDonald's. $20 is around a 25% raise from what California fast food workers were already making. And of course, what they were already making were some of the highest numbers in the country. And McDonald's has been indeed raising prices on their meals for months to prepare for this. So this report is going to be super indicative of the consumer's health to see how well McDonald's and other chains are going to be able to pass on these costs to consumers. And of course, around the nation, we're seeing similar changes, not as high as California's, but similar labor cost increases for McDonald's and other fast food joints. Obviously, if McDonald's starts going under, that's going to be a big disaster down the road for some of the healthcare stocks that service a lot of the diseases that fast food causes. And it's going to be a big disaster for a lot of the gym companies, a lot of mom and pop gyms that are going to have a hard time attracting customers that aren't as fat as they used to be. So anyways, heading into this week, we've got two big tech companies with high expectations, some everyday consumer stocks indicating consumer health and sentiments like again, McDonald's, Starbucks, MasterCard, so forth. You have a major chip company reporting and more. So will markets continue to recover? Cover, or is this just a fake out? There's a lot of risks pointing to the downside, but there's also some room for companies to beat. So let us know your take down below. Now, in terms of stocks to watch closely this week, take a look at Bitcoin miner Mara Lovely Mora. So Mora has been climbing from lows at $14.27. And I believe as we get into the historical data of what happens post having, which, which is prices go up, well, you're going to see Mara continue to run. Mara reported some pretty hot numbers in her last quarterly report. And I believe you'll continue to see that be a trend in the next report since that covered Q1 of 2024. And that was a really hot time for Bitcoin. Mars report is expected to come May 9th, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. May 9th is the week after this coming one. The other stock to watch before we get on to the main entree is Palantir. You see, Palantir is staging a comeback right now, heading into its earnings as well. Earnings are going to come out on May 6th, the same week of Mars, the week after this coming one. And there seems to be some available space to get some of that anticipatory run heading into that report. Okay, let's go in and move on to the main entree this lovely evening. I hope you're hungry. Ticker symbol H-O-L-O. H-O-L-O is micro cloud hologram. Inc. It's a tech company that specializes in holographic applications that develop software and hardware solutions centered on holographic technology with a focus on holographic software, content services, and intelligent automobile systems. 
a market which, by the way, is also in an exponential growth curve right now. But when it comes to most penny stocks, the goal, in my view, should be to use them and abuse them, riding the wave when you get it and then getting the hell out. Because oftentimes holding a penny stock that's already up huge is like holding a hot potato. You're simply going to burn yourself if you hold it too long. But anyways, I believe hollow is set up for another massive rally, and there's three primary reasons for this. Number one, the short squeeze setup on the stock. Number two, historical data and reactions at the current price point and see several catalysts that you need to know. And we'll explain all of these, but first for context for those of you in Zip Trader U, we actually alerted ticker symbol hollow back on February 7th before its massive two-week squeeze to around 98 bucks. That was almost a 100x and a large reason it had that run is because they had regained compliance with NASDAQ listing rules. And we even called it out before Bloomberg said it was moving like a meme stock. And of course, after Bloomberg covered it, everyone started buying, which accelerated the trend even more. But anyways, look, I mean, if you're looking at the stock right now it's back at levels pre-rally pre-squeeze and i believe it's heading for another massive squeeze and i'll explain why if you open up the chart a little bit you can see this is a stock with massive pump and dumpy cycles and it's oftentimes you'll see this in penny stocks because when they get attention on a catalyst or media coverage they'll go up huge and then eventually people take profits and they'll go right back down or some bad pr will come out and they'll go back down penny stocks are of course super susceptible to news swings because every little news piece can be a make it or break it situation for a small company. If Apple reports they are getting sued, for example, maybe you get a half a percent down, if anything. But if a tiny company gets a report out of being sued, that can drop the price 50% or more and vice versa for good catalysts. But right now, we happen to be trading at a historical level that is dumpy dumpito lows. And if history repeats and we get more of these insane rally cycles, this will age to be a good entry point. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the short seller situation here. So shorts playing with the stock have gotten themselves in a uniquely bad position should another rally happen. You see, shorts are continuing to account for a large amount of activity in the stock, despite the fact that the stock is already trading at, again, historical lows. Benzinga reports, quote, micro cloud holograms hollow short percent of float has risen 54.3% since its last report. The company recently reported that it has 753,000 shares sold short, which is 19.18% of all regular shares that are available for trading. And if you look at previous reactions, the reason this run, the reason the runs are so severe is because shorts get squeezed when the stock rallies. And this is relevant because, again, if you want to understand why the stock has run so much in previous squeeze cycles, it's because shorts have gotten way, way, way too greedy. And when a stock rallies so aggressively, well, what happens? Well, many shorts have to close their short position. And how do they do that? If you're unaware, well, by buying shares. And that creates a self-fulfilling prophecy to the upside. But more so than that, I mean, this stock is particularly ripe for a squeeze because when shorts attack a stock that is already down so much, well, that's only setting them up for some bad, bad ricocheting. Shorting a stock that is at historical lows is like trying to get juice out of a lemon that's been used all day. There's just not much juice left in it, and it doesn't make much sense to continue to do it. Maybe best case scenario with the stock, these shorts can get a little bit more falling, maybe 20, 30, 40 cents, but they are also leaving themselves open to huge, huge losses if the stock goes up for any reason whatsoever. Now, is there a reason for the stock to go up? Well, right now it's important to understand that there's actually three key catalysts for this stock. Number one, it's in the AI space. Hollow made a substantial effort last year to make sure that it's identified with AI. They did this by introducing their Hollow Digital Human GPT. Quote, Hollow's self-developed HD HGPT technology creates a hollow digital human with AI that can be possessed through holographic digital display based on deep learning technology. Hollow's digital human is digitally shaped holographic visual figures that exist in a virtual world created by computer technology such as computer graphics, graphic rendering, motion capture, deep learning, and voice synthesis. The digital human is a comprehensive product with multiple characteristics, including appearance, performance, and interaction capabilities. Hollow's HDH GPT can automatically understand users' questions and provide more accurate and valuable information through an artificial intelligence model that talks to the user. The HDH GPT technology developed by Hollow can make the dialogue of characters in the virtual world more realistic and closer to human beings with the ability to memorize and achieve continuous dialogue. Now, this catalyst is important because it means that whenever the stock rallies, well, media is going to cover it by calling it an AI stock, which will justify the rally in many people's eyes and cause more rally rallitos. Remember, companies responding to what investors want, which is AI exposure, is a very, very big deal for the stock price. Okay, number two, the joining of the Communications Industry Association. So it was announced back in February, the wary of the Feb, that MicroCloud Hologram planned to join the Communications Industry Association, and this association includes Amazon, 
on Apple and Meta. And this is another good catalyst for the stock and something that media pundits and such can talk about quite a lot. Number three, the stock regained compliance. Hollow got a delisting notification from the NASDAQ back in 2023 because they were trading at under a dollar per share, but now they are well over a dollar and have an incentive to keep it up again so they don't have those delisting threats again. Now, when you go back to the stock, the overall bigger picture view here is here you've got a stock that is overwhelmingly shorted by aggressive greedy short sellers at a price point that is historically low at the same time where the stock has AI exposure, a big history of massive, massive crunching and squeezing of shorts and massive, massive rally rallitos, and at the same time has a few recent catalysts like regaining compliance and of course that association plan. And that's my overall thesis for hollow stock. Is it a good buy and hold? Absolutely not. Is it a good trade short term for a squeezy McSqueezy? I think so. I think it's at least worth a look. Hollow wouldn't need to have a gigantic move like it did in February in order to squeeze shorts and cause the run to go exponential again. You could have a push towards $3 or three and a half bucks and still get a massive squeezy McSqueezy. So in my view, certainly one to put on your radar. Anyways, that caps off today's video. And I do want to give you a quick plug. Today is the last day to take advantage of our sale on Zip Trader options. You will get 200 bucks off with coupon code FLASH200. And this deal expires shortly after midnight tonight. The volatility right now in markets means it's a great time to start trading options. Some of the recent alert winners include Tesla puts, which had an around 89% increase alert price to highs. Gold calls, which ran 129% alert price to highs. NVIDIA short-term puts, which ran about 74% alert price to highs, S triple Q calls, which ran about 91% alert price to highs. And on top of that, we've made numerous strategic dip buy alerts as well. And I believe those are going to age very well as markets do what they always do, which is sell off and then rally, rally tail and back and forth. Anyways, if you'd like to join, make sure to use that coupon code FLASH200 before midnight tonight, and we'll see you there. Anyways, folks, that caps off today's video. Have a good rest of your weekend, and we'll see you in the next one.